Hi guys, um, it's Demita Vontana. I'm here with Mindfuck Podcast. My co-host Marcus Dowling asked me to hop on and do a little educating. Here comes the puppy. You might have seen on Instagram, I have a special guest this week. My favorite boy is in town. So thank you my other boy for dropping him off. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, consent, um, context and harm, and protocol versus rules. That's the best uh, best thing to start with. It's very short. So on the Mindfuck podcast, we have a set of protocol. There are no rules, but we have protocol. So the difference between protocol and rules is that rules can only be obeyed or broken. But protocol is meant to be followed. So therefore, protocol implies consent. This is Hubby. Let mommy work, baby. Go to bed. Um, please go to bed. Next time he won't be here. I film on the floor. I, live, I like to live life on the floor. It's much more comfortable down here for some of us. All right, back to the lesson. Um, so what's up with consent? So consent has an asterisk. See this? Consent. What's the asterisk? It stands for enthusiastic. And I know that the consent conversation is a little new and some folks get confused. How do I know they have consented or my partner has consented or most often that my female friend has consented? Um, so that's why we have an asterisk. It is not whether or not it is clear someone has consented or not that causes us to stumble because consent is supposed to be enthusiastic. That means it's very clear to you that they want this. And that's a great way to start a sexual exchange or encounter with someone. So if she says, I want to do this, or will you do this thing? Or would you like to do this thing with me? Or do you want to have sex? Or more importantly, the follow-up question, do you want to have sex? What are you into? So that's covered. Don't worry about it. If she wants to fuck you. You're going to know. Now, um, if you are now fucking her and you need to know if how you're fucking her is what she enjoys, you start asking questions. So that's where consent gets a little murky because you think that once you've had the conversation and started that the consent uh, portion has finished, it is closed. Absolutely not. Consent is... ongoing. It's not a box that you check to get in bed with somebody. It is a dialogue, one of the themes of mind fucked, that is mind fuck, not fucked, fuck, that is established, a dialogue that is established, initiated, well, honestly, at first contact. What if she doesn't want to talk to you? Do you guys understand that women need to consent to even being talked to? Okay. So uh, your, your sexy time is happening. There will be more questions. There will be more opportunities for you to demonstrate to your partner of any gender or identity that you care about their pleasure, that you demonstrate that communication is an important value to a satisfying and successful sexual experience for everybody involved. And you also demonstrate an openness and a willingness to learn. You demonstrate humility because you show that you don't know everything. And I promise you that if you go with this enthusiastic model where the consent dialogue is continuous or at least always available when needed, never shut down, okay, like it's there the whole time, you will have moments of laughter that are delightful and only add to the connection you have with your partner. Um, and if somebody needs to be asked twice, ask them twice or pause and let them answer, okay? Because a lot of us are not used to being asked for consent. Um, all right. Okay, so R. Kelly, getting to it. Um, I'm going to talk about the harm and context piece. So two of the points of protocol for Mindfuck are do no harm and context is everything. This is what I mean by that as a BDSM practitioner. How R. Kelly got to where he was at ruins everything. But what he did in a different context does no harm. 
What I mean by did is the training, not hitting up underage girls, not preying on women, not brainwashing, not manipulating. See, all of that shit is where he eliminated this. And that's what made it unethical. So we're talking about consenting adults here coming together to do uh, training, um, often referred to as protocol. But the point is what I saw uh, just the possibility, the small possibility of, because obviously the definitions, definitions of like BDSM and dominance and submission and training are not what that doc was about. But the same thing could happen that happened in this. This is my textbook that I have to teach from. Well, I get, I get to participate in voluntarily teaching one chapter on paraphilias. Uh, lived export in the room. And... Um, I couldn't get past the first paragraph on my chapter. It conflated. That's the word, guys. Conflated from the start. Uh, uh, harm with BDSM. Uh, I've, I've been around BDSM long enough to say that the harm part is really not your greatest concern. Okay? It's, it's good for clicks, but it's not good for practice because there's a lot of other things that are more important uh, reducing your harm, managing your risk, being aware. Yes, but the that's another podcast. All right. So we look at context and and we look at whether harm is being done. And, and both of these things fail in the R. Kelly case. But there is um, a new wave of events, not new, like a wave that I am seeing for the first time of parties for BDSM practitioners who are people of color. OK, one of these is I attended last month fantastic and really great education from um, Madam Seduction, who I think is based here in DC. Their next event is in February. It's called Touch, Taste, Feel. Touch, Taste, Feel. All are welcome, but definitely thrown for and by people of color. And there are, this is testament to the fact that there are people who want to practice this. So let's say you tell one of your girlfriends that you're doing this and she's like, you're dating R. Kelly. How are you supposed to explain the difference or how are you supposed to feel comfortable enough asking for what you want from a partner? So just think about context and then think about whether harm is being done. And if you are an adult and you are consenting and this is what you want, and this wasn't an idea that a partner introduced to you and then like pushed into your brain, but these are things you've been curious about and that's why you're asking about them and your partner has been curious about similar things and you're a match like somebody can give and somebody can receive, then go ahead. You're consenting adults in a healthy context wanting to do things together that will do no harm. And what I mean by no harm is nobody's being abused because you both came together with similar passions and desires and you know what you want. So um, that is a really common conflation, but to people out there that want to practice BDSM, I don't want you to be put off by the, the documentary and how similar some of his behaviors were. Um, all right, I'll be totally honest. There were points where I was like, fuck man, that's a good protocol. Like, why did you have to go ruin it? Like he was, he, <sighs> sorry guys. <sighs> sorry, the bad examples get all the attention. There's plenty of good examples out there. It's one of the reasons Marcus and I are working on this project. So, uh, consent is enthusiastic review time. Consent is enthusiastic and ongoing. Even the best and the brightest conflate harm with BDSM. And secondly, that was probably really loud on your speakers. Sorry, guys. Uh, thirdly and finally, look at the context and look at whether something's doing harm. Oh, oh, bonus ending. Perv by Jesse Baring. He also wrote a book called Why It's a Penis Shaped Like That. Uh, Jesse is a professor in New Zealand of all places. So way to go, Jesse. You're winning at life. Um, the Sexual Deviant and all of this. This is also a textbook I use in my classes, but this one, thank God, is much better written and has a lot better information by that. And what I mean is no conflation between being a, a BDSM practitioner and harm or being a pervert and harm or being a kinkster and harm. Um, but it delves into it. And there are some very challenging examples of context in this book that even had this one kind of... Like, really? Like, I couldn't get down with some things, but it was a New York Times editor's choice. And hands down, the book that my students say changes their lives. So I would really encourage everybody to go out and buy this, especially if you uh, have some questions after that documentary. 
great, fantastic, broad, general, really awesome start to that exploration. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.